In 1794, Prince Edward arrived in Halifax as military commander and was in charge of shaping Halifax's military defenses and protecting its important Royal Navy base. He built Fort Charlotte on George's Island in 1798, named after his mother, Queen Charlotte. The fort has undergone many upgrades over the years. A Martello Tower was added during the tensions leading up to the War of 1812. Again, there were major upgrades in the 1860s with tensions rising with the American Civil War. Fort Charlotte was reconstructed with a south-facing upper battery mounting eight 9-inch rifled muzzle-loading guns, and below that a lower battery, consisting of four 10-inch RMLs. These powerful guns had an effective range of 2,000 yards with 400-pound shells. The center of the island became a maze of underground magazines and tunnels to service the batteries. Join me as we explore the underground tunnels and lower battery of Fort Charlotte. Welcome to George's Island and Fort Charlotte here. Um, so the first fortifications were built here on the island in 1749 with C.F. Halifax being founded. And C.F. Halifax was um, well, founded actually mainly as a navy yard. So all of the forts that you see here in Halifax were built to actually protect the navy yard. So, uh, yeah. so these early defenses, they were all um, field works. They were all meant as temporary uh, defenses. And that was all the way up until 1794 when Prince Edward actually visited here in Halifax. When he stayed here in Halifax, he ordered all of the forts to be um, upgraded. So that includes the, uh, well, here on George's Island, that included a big oval wall. So what remains of that back wall there? Uh, a big oval wall and then a Martello Tower uh, that was later added. Uh, but that was your kind of um, War of 1812 era defenses. Uh, so, there's a big oval wall, and he also named the fort itself, the fort here on the island, Fort Charlotte, in honor of his mother. So that's how uh, Fort Charlotte here got its name. And it stayed pretty much unchanged after that until the 1850s when they decided that, again, since George's Island is like the perfect spot for actually defending the harbour as a last line of defence, well, they needed to actually upgrade everything again. So that included... Uh, in their plans, they included the upper battery, the magazine complex itself, and then the lower battery, which you'll see on the tour. Yeah, so as we go through the tunnels here, watch your head, watch your feet. Uh, ceilings are slightly uneven. The floors themselves are very slippery, and there's two sets of very steep stairs that we have to go down and then up. So just kind of watch your step on those. Uh, the tunnels themselves are only ever meant as a uh, magazine complex. They aren't prisons or anything. Um, so there was a prison camp here on the island, so during uh, the uh, Seven Years War, so um, there's an Acadian prison camp here on the island. So uh, the British, they had to, de well, they deported all of the Acadians from Nova Scotia because they were French. Uh, so they actually kept about a thousand Acadians here on the island, so during that time period. But no prisoners in the tunnels themselves, it's a hundred years later. And you'll also notice it's relatively damp down here, which really isn't a good thing because black powder uh, gets ruined very fast. So they tried all sorts of things, but they were able to pretty much seal this room off to try and keep the moisture out of the room. 
Uh, since it's so cold down here, any humid air that actually makes its way in condenses on the ceiling and slowly drips down. So on a very, very humid day, the height of July or in August, there's almost a cloud down here. That's how moist it is. Yeah. Are there any questions? Oh. All right, so keep moving. Alright, so those little rooms that we walk by as we're coming down the stairs, those are for your actual shots themselves, your cartridges. So uh, you, you kept your ammunition for the upper battery in, within the magazine complex because there's actually what's known as shot elevators that take you straight up to the guns themselves. And that's what the rails are for. So the rails kind of make a big horseshoe around the bottom here. And they are connected to, again, the vertical shafts go straight up and down. So you can lift the cart straight up, straight up to the gun and then bring it straight back down. Um, you know, your black powder itself for the guns, you would, you didn't just take a barrel and then pour it down the barrel of the gun. There's no way to accurately measure that or kind of keep it all contained. You would put it in a silk bag or a smaller, like a very thin bag. So that way you could just slide it into the gun. And that would have been kept in those small rooms. So that way you didn't have to, like if somebody were to attack the fort, you didn't have to, well, open up a barrel and carefully measure out everything, making sure that you didn't get it everywhere. Uh, so you just keep the smaller things like that in those rooms. All right, this here is your tapenier. This is a, well, a protected passageway between the inner fort and the ditch. So it also serves as a, well, it's considered a bomb-proof room since the walls are so thick. The artillery at that time was not explosive. Um, so it's considered a bomb-proof room. You mean? I wouldn't want to try it out. But uh, it also serves to help you with, if, you, if somebody were to attack the fort and actually make it into the, it past the outer wall, they don't have a way to shoot inside the ditch. So these holes in the wall are for rifles, not ventilation. So you can put a rifle here, and since they're slanted out, like uh, they form a V like this, uh, out towards the outside, and put it here, move side to side, up and down, you have a full range of motion, so you can shoot anything that you see, whereas your attackers only have three inches to shoot back inside. So there's no real uh, way to actually shoot back. Also, you can see straight down into the corner of the ditch from here, so there's nowhere to actually hide within the ditch. So. So it stopped us here at the corner of the ditch because, well, from here you can actually see that the two tapeniers on either side have an overlapping field of vision. That's so that no matter what, you can't hide flat up against the wall from the tapenier around the corner. This would just be shot at from that side. And I also want to emphasize the point that this was a dry ditch. It was never actually meant to be filled with water. Uh, the walls themselves are taller because you want to break the ankles, break the legs of enemy attackers as they were coming over the walls. And if you have six feet of water in here, well then that breaks your fall. It's like jumping into a pool, jumping on the solid earth will hurt you. Will hurt you. So it's very important that it stay dry so all of the water was drained out and then just drained out into the ocean. It's the easiest way to get rid of the water. Yeah, so we're going to head into the lower battery here, which is where you can find some of the largest guns in the city.
and it, the gun itself weighs 18 tons, so it fired a 400-pound shell propelled by 70 pounds of black powder. So it's an incredibly powerful gun, but since it's so large, it's only really effective against the larger, slow-moving vessels. So, uh, like your ironclad vessels at that time period, yep. the modern equivalent would be like a container ship, although those are still relatively fast. Um, but a container ship would be the perfect target for this. If the path is very predictable, um, it's very hard for them to actually turn around, so these guns here would be perfect to actually shoot at uh, container ships. Um, this here, uh, well, is accurate to, well, you can fire at 6,000 yards, it's your maximum range, but it's really only effective at about 2,000 yards. It's because you have fancy you can, like targeting computers or anything. You just relied on the eyes of your uh, number one, so the person in charge of the gun. So it's only really effective to 2,000 yards, which really only brings you up to um, uh, McNabb's Island there in the higher area. So these guns were really, they saw their, their peak that, during the 1880s, and by 1890, the guns themselves were pretty much useless, because at that point, the um, technology, naval technology. So in 1902, they actually replaced all the guns in the fort with uh, three guns. So they went from 12 guns to three guns. So yeah, we'll see where those were up in the upper battery. Just a minute. But do you have any questions to s about down here, the lower battery? How long would it take to load these? Yeah. There's no real exact time, at least in the historical documents I've read, but it, relatively speaking, it would be about five-ish minutes. It could be longer depending on just how experienced the gun crew was. But uh, there's no like exact number that like, anybody knows. The reason why it takes so long, the shells themselves weigh 400 pounds. It's actually lower than the the barrel of the gun. You have to use ropes and pulleys hanging off the front here to actually lower it in. You can't just lift 400 pounds using two people. <laughs> so, and also, these shells themselves were studded shells, which means that they had studs on them that fit into the right one. So, the grooves would start all the way to the back of the gun, and the studs would fit into that. So, you actually have to twist the shell all the way back to the um, So, it's just an extra step that will take you a few extra minutes. Has the well, some of the graffiti here. So it's a WH1863, it looks like. Um, so that is probably, it's widely believed to be one of the masons who actually worked on the fort here. Here is the only well within the actual fort itself. So if you want to get water down in the parade spirit, you'd have to run up to the upper battery, then come down here, then we'll lug your water all the way back down the hill. There are other wells on the island. There's a couple down towards the um, um, lighthouse keeper's house, the married officer's uh, um, house, as well as down towards the coal shed down by the dock. We're going to keep going up the stairs. All right, so the upper battery, well, this is the upper battery. When it was first built, it was an eight gun battery. So it had eight of the nine inch rifle muzzle loaders. So a little bit smaller than what we saw downstairs, but the same principle still applied. They really weren't all that effective against uh, smaller, faster moving vessels. So in 1902, uh, the British military replaced all of the guns here on the island with the quick fire guns, three of them. They sat in the concrete, very crumbly emplacements. There's one here and then two more on the other side. The quick fire guns, they didn't have quite the stopping power 
Uh, their caliber was much smaller, but they could fire much faster. Uh, they were breech loading, so you could load them from the back. Uh, they were more accurate. Um, you could spin, most importantly, you could spin them a lot faster. And they had a much longer range than the uh, rifled artillery, the muzzle loading artillery. And these lasted all the way up until the end of World War One. And by that point, naval technology had progressed to a point that if a, a ship ever actually made it inside, like, past Richnav's Island, well, they could just bombard the city directly, bypassing um, George's Island with all the defenses here. So, at that point, they removed all of the uh, quick fire guns and basically abandoned the island. And then that was all the way up until World War II, when they actually put an anti-aircraft gun at the top of the hill, and that was the only defense here. So uh, there was no big artillery pieces, and uh, the aircraft were the biggest threat here in Halifax. The Navy was constantly coming in and out. Submarines were also a worry, but uh, the aircrafts were the worst, the worst threats. Uh, even today, we still have a, kind of a military presence here. We still have the radar station run by the Coast Guard. Um, so that really makes 250 odd years of um, military here on the island.